Elhamdülillahi Rabbil Alemin Ve sallallahu ve sellem ala nebiyyine Muhammed Ve ala alihi ve sahbihi ve selleme meba' Continue on with our treaties The nullifiers of faith We've reached the third Nakhid min nawakid al-Islam Qala Sheikh Muhammed ibn Abdul Wahab Rahimahullah ta'ala Al-Thalith من لم يكفر المشركين أو شق في كفرهم أو صحها مذهبهم كفرة. so the sheikh said, رحمه الله تعالى he said that the third nullifier, which is something we need to pay attention to, especially in this time and age where there is a new da'wah which we've never known in the history of Islam where there is groups of Muslims and communities trying to come closer to other communities that commit polytheism. And what I mean by coming closer that they are sitting together in discussions and panels and conferences and alleging that we are one faith. And even from the point of uh, the intellect and the people who participate in those uh, discussions, mo most of those religions would even, uh, and, and those people who have other faiths will argue themselves that no, we're not one faith. That is why so-and-so, uh, this person is a priest and this person is a rabbi and this person is a monk or what have you, is because they believe that that path is the path to paradise and that other paths lead you away from that, of course lead you to the hellfire. This is the most commonly accepted view by most of the faiths. No one says, well, I believe in my faith, but I think we're all going to paradise. Although there are people who have this ideology, and so it's imperative for us as Muslims to know and understand that this is falsehood. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, all throughout the Quran, and the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, all throughout the uh, authentic sunnah, have showed us that there is one path. And verily, this straight path, this is my straight path. Uh, so follow it. And do not follow the various ways, the various paths. Because the various paths, they lead you to the hellfires. The Prophet uh, described to us uh, throughout his authentic sunnah. So, this Naqid min al Islam the Shaykh said, Rahimullah Ta'ala, whoever does not consider polytheists to be disbelievers, or doubts their disbelief, or authenticates their religion, has disbelieved. So that's that's a critical and crucial point, which is substantiated by the Quran and the Sunnah, that there is no possibility for saying that we are one world faith or that there's a unity, there's wahdat idyan, there, there's one religion, one world religion. No, we are Muslim and we follow Islam because we believe Islam is a truth. We believe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has legislated for Islam and that Allah doesn't accept anything except Islam. And we call people and invite people to Islam. We don't invite people and say, hey, unlike some of the people say, and I've heard this with my own ears, we have individuals where I'm from who actually go around and give da'wah, invite to this ideology, this ideology which has been unknown uh, up until uh, these current times where they go around, they travel. A particular individual, he's a part of a group, they call themselves the Three Amigos. He is supposed to be a Muslim. And the other two individuals, one is a rabbi and one is a, I believe, a Catholic priest or a preacher. And they go around inviting people. And I heard him myself say that our only difference is, you know, you're going, we're all going to heaven. All three of us are going to heaven. We're all on the same path. The only difference is that, uh, you know, you know, the only thing that's going to make us uh, enter us into paradise is our good deeds. So 
For him, it's not a matter of creed at all. So that shows you that he has a great deviance in his creed and he needs to come to Islam. Because why I say that? Because this is a, a, a naqad min the waqad al-Islam. This is something that takes you out of the fold of Islam. Because why? What is the essence of this, this argument? As we're going to get into uh, the essence of this uh, naqad is that if Allah says someone is a disbeliever, inna ladina kafuru min ahlil kitabi wa mushrikeen fi nari jahannam. Allah says, Allah all throughout the Quran says, uh, for example, in the verse we just recited, inna ladina kafuru, verily those who believe, min ahlil kitabi wa mushrikeen, from the people of the book, meaning the Jews and the Christians, wal uh, mushrikeen, and the polytheists, fi nari jahannam khalidina fiha, they will be in the hellfire forever. That means never getting out. So that means Allah has declared them disbelievers. But yet you have the audacity to come with a new ideology and say, no, 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 no. We're all going to paradise. So that means that you have doubt or you have disagreed or you have declared what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has uh, declared as, as truth to be falsehood. Because it suits your desires and whims. This nullifier of Islam compri comprises three main issues. Firstly, that it is an obligation to declare whoever Allah and His Messenger وسلم, have declared to be non-Muslim as a di disbeliever. Idol worshippers, pagans from the Jews and Christians, and whoever does not believe in the messengers sent by Allah or even some of them, meaning if someone doesn't believe in Jesus والسلام, as a messenger and a prophet of Allah, then they have disbelieved or they don't believe in Moses or they don't believe in, in David or they don't believe in uh, uh, any of the prophets والسلام, then they are a disbeliever and this is by consensus of the, the Muslim Ummah the whole community of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. From the evidence that shows they, they are disbelievers is a saying of Allah the Almighty. Those who said that Allah was the Messiah, the son of Maryam, have disbelieved. This is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in Surah Al-Ma'idah, uh, verse 17. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala here makes takfir. This is as we said in our first uh, first lecture about takfir. This is takfir uh, uh, mutlaq. In general, Allah says, those who said that Allah was the Messiah, was the Messiah, the son of Maryam, have disbelieved. So whoever holds this belief, this is general takfir, is a disbeliever. Whoever holds the creed, and who holds this the creed is almost anyone who considers himself a Christian. There are some Christian sects that have almost a, a very similar, maybe the Unitarians and some other ones, who have an, a, 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 a belief which is closer to monotheism. That they they have, have the belief of rububiyya, that of Allah's lordship, and they do not believe that uh, uh, Jesus والسلام, was the son of Allah or, or anything like this. But however, that is... The, an imperative part of their creed is that accepting Jesus as the Son of God. However, Allah makes takfir of those people, saying that they are disbelievers. So there is no way for a, a person to consider themselves Muslim and say that, yes, uh, say accept them as their brothers in creed, in faith. That's It's impossible because Allah has dec declared them as non-believers. Uh, or disbelievers. Allah the Almighty says in another verse, those who believe, uh, those who disbelieve from the children of Israel were cursed by the tongues of Dawood and Isa, Jesus, the son of Mary, because they used to be disobedient and transgress. So those who disbelieve from the children of Israel were cursed by the tongues of David and Jesus, the son of Mary, because they used to be disobedient and transgress. So they used to go beyond the bounds. So again, Allah declared takfir of them, declared that they were disbelievers. This is verse, this is in Surah Al-Ma'idah, verse 78. So whoever does not consider them to be disbelievers has denied the Quran, and whoever denies the Quran has disbelieved.
then it is an obligation to believe they are disbelievers according to Allah and his messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam's judgment upon them and is sufficient enough to declare them to be disbelievers due to, to their denial of the message of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam meaning they don't believe in the Quran and they don't believe is in the prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam is being a prophet alayhi salatu wasallam and as is mentioned in the Torah and the the Bible the second issue related to this nullifier faith is doubting the disbelief of those who Allah and His Messenger والسلام, have declared to be disbelievers or the scholars of Islam have consensus upon. This principle applies regardless of whether they are pagans or Jews or Christians or those who consider themselves Muslims, those who commit shirk with Allah by worshipping the graves or tombs, they are all considered disbelievers along with the one who denies their disbelief because they are doing what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has declared, Allah has made takfir of these particular, uh, uh, of these groups of people. So then for someone to come later and say, no, they're believers, they're brothers in faith, then this is a disbelief. This is disbelief. This is because they have broken a condition of the testimony of faith and that is certainty, meaning having certainty in what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has revealed, the Qur'an, the believing that the Qur'an is the speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that we practice it, we live it in our, as a, we live our lives in accordance with the Qur'an and we hold our creed, our creed is derived from the Qur'an and the Sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. The person who uh, be, does not make uh, de declare people who Allah has declared disbelievers, they are showing a, a doubtfulness in the Quran. Primarily, this is due to the fact that the person who doubts whether the aforementioned groups are disbeliever, does, disbelievers does not possess certainty in the concept of Tawheed. In addition, it is important to note that declaring a person to be a non-Muslim is from Allah's rights in accordance with his book and the Prophet ﷺ's sunnah and the consensus of the pious predecessors. So if a scholar passes a ruling upon an individual, declaring him to be a disbeliever for leaving the prayer because it is an issue that the scholars disagree upon, uh, meaning takfir of the one who leads the prayer, then it is not permissible to declare the one who disagrees with this ruling a disbeliever or deem that they have doubtfulness in Tawheed because it is an issue of disagreement upon the scholars of Ahlul Sunnah. So this is imperative to understand because some people uh, amongst the takfiris, those people who have uh, extremism in uh, declaring people uh, to be non Muslims and uh, disbelievers, they say, for example, anytime one of their scholars declares someone to be a disbeliever, uh, whether it's justly or unjustly, according to principles of the Quran and the Sunnah or outside of that, they say that because you don't share that belief, you're a disbeliever. In fact, that is the creed of the Khawarij. That is the minhaj, the methodology of the Khawarij, the first sect in Islam. Because it is not permissible to make ilzam of the people, to force the people to hold the same ruling that you or your sheikh hold. Now, of course, your sheikh has to bring dalil. There has to be evidence to for this very serious ruling. But to make takfir, this this asl here, this this foundation in creed, this is in regards to those people that there is no doubt that shuck has been totally removed about whether they're believers uh, or not. And this is the case with those people that there's a nus uh, that the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has declared them to be disbelievers and or the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam has declared them to be disbelievers or that there's an ijma, there's a consensus but if one scholar declares so and so this this individual or that individual for being a disbeliever and someone else does not, another scholar does not hold that belief that does not negate or nullify that person's Islam and so that's imperative for us to understanding why? because there's ikhtilaf in that because there's a difference in view and it, perhaps they both have their evidences for that and that is from the ijtihad of the one making that decree making that ruling upon that individual so this is imperative to know that you don't just go around making takfir of other people because they don't make 
take fear of so-and-so, of, of this leader or that leader who uh, is a communist or, or what have you. But in fact, these are Sharia rulings and they're left to the scholars of Islam. However, if a person doubts whether someone is known to be a non-Muslim by necessity, is Muslim or not, like a Catholic priest for instance, or believes he is a believer, then this person has disbelieved in the Quran and the Sunnah and disagreed with the consensus of the Muslim community. And again, as we mentioned already, that if a person does not decree who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has decreed to be a disbeliever or the Prophet sallallahu has mentioned that they are disbelievers to be disbelievers then they have disbelieved uh, and the third issue that relates to this nullifier faith is believing or affirming the religion or way of life of disbelievers so this is the third issue in relation to the statement that Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahhab mentioned, the third issue, it relates to um, believing or affirming the religion or way of those people who disbelieve in Allah and His Messenger, alayhi salatu wasalam. This constitutes an even more serious form of disbelief. For example, if a person says the religion of the Jews or Christians is also correct, or they are also going to paradise, and the only difference between us is our deeds, or they are believers just like Muslims, or Buddhists follow the correct path as well, all of these uh, various statements constitute disbelief and amount to the rejection of the Quran as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and whoever desires a religion other than Islam will not have it accepted, and in the hereafter they will be of the losers. This is in uh, Surah Al-Ali Imran, verse uh, 85. All of the previous religions were nullified by the Quran and the message of Islam. And the Prophet wasallam was the seal of the Prophets wasallam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, So because of their breach of their covenant, we cursed them and made their breasts grow hard. They changed the words from their uh, correct places and have abandoned a good part of the message that was sent to them. Surah Al-Ma'idah. Uh, verse 13. This ref verse refers to the Jews and the Christians who received the message of Islam from Allah but broke their covenant with Allah and changed the words from the revealed books like the Torah and the Injil or the Bible, choosing instead to follow their desires and forsaking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's commands. Shaykh Abdulaziz al Rajahi explains that the one who refuses to declare a non Muslim a disbeliever has contradicted the very essence of Tawheed which constitutes of two main pillars, belief in Allah and disbelief in anything that is worshipped besides Him, subhanahu wa ta'ala, meaning the Taghut. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, whoever disbelieves in Taghut and believes in all believes in Allah, then he has grasped the most trustworthy handhold that will never break. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also says in the Quran about uh, the, the message of all the, the prophets and messengers alayhim after salatu wasalam that they were sent with the message of Tawheed and to disbelieve in the Tawgood Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says وَلَكَدْ بَعَثْنَا فِي كُلِّ أُمَّةٍ رَسُولًا إِنْ نِعْبُدُ اللَّهَ وَاجْتَنِبُوا Tawgood and we sent to every, mess, uh, every nation a messenger to worship Allah alone that's Tawheed, that's monotheism وَاجْتَنِبُوا Tawgood and stay away from those things a worship besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, those things, those people, those individuals, those uh, statues, those idols, those saints that are worshiped besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that shows us that there's, it's impossible for someone to be a Muslim and sit next to someone else who disbelieves in Allah and, and His Messenger and say that we're the same faith. That doesn't mean you don't have relations with them. They, maybe they're your kin. Maybe you have, have, you're being just with them. You're giving them gifts. You're having good relations. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about here that you are saying that your faith is one. That you are giving, you're propagating the same faith, propagating the same religion, going around together and saying we're one and let's look at our commonalities. That is not what Islam has come. Islam has called, has come to give all of mankind the, the message of worshiping Allah alone, coming back to their purpose. So there's no way that you could be calling people to worship Allah alone and then 
someone else is calling to worshiping snakes or rats or elephants or uh, man or prophets alayhim afdal salatu wasalam there's just no way you can reconcile that difference the one who has rejected this principle has rejected the meaning of the testimony of faith which is comprised of negation there is no god worthy of worship and affirmation except Allah by negating the worship of false gods one is disbelieving in tawaghid and at the same time affirming that there is no deity worthy of worship except Allah the almighty and another great benefit here uh, regarding the term Tawhut or Tawahid. Ibn al Qayyim says the meaning of Tawhut is that it entails either worshipping other than Allah or following or being followed to the extent that it transgresses the prescribed boundaries. Shaykh Ahmed al Najmi comments so whoever worships other than other than Allah, the Almighty, has exceeded the bounds of worship. Therefore, it is the responsibility of everything created to be a slave, not worship, and to worship Allah alone, sincerely. Meaning being a slave of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that you worship only Allah, the creator of the heavens and earth, who said, that I have not created mankind in jinn, except for the purpose of worshiping me. And then there's another benefit, uh, Sheikh Al-Alama Qala Al-Alama Suleiman Ibn Suhman Rahimahullah Ta'ala He mentioned a very beneficial statement One of the previous scholars From the A'imah to Da'wah He said Wa'lam Annuhu laysa kullu khata Which tihad wa jahil Yaghfir li sahibahu so he said that we have to know that everyone who makes a mistake and makes ijtihad, you know, strives to, to get the uh, jurisprudic, uh, the, the, the legislative ruling in an issue by striving to uh, deduce a ruling from the text, the Quran and the Sunnah, or a person that is ignorant, ignorant, be, is excused by ignorance. So, meaning not everyone who has these mistakes, uh, who makes a mistake out of ijtihad, or out of ignorance, or out of a mistake is excused, because these are some of the reasons a person can be excused uh, from being declared a disbeliever, meaning that uh, these are the mu'ana of takfir. These are the things that prohibit someone from being declared an apostate from the religion, meaning if they fell into an issue of kufr, uh, uh, and uh, maybe they've uttered a statement of disbelief, or they have committed an action which takes a person out of the fold of Islam, that doesn't necessitate them being a disbeliever. And Sheikh Suhman here is saying that also, likewise, everyone who does these issues is not excused by ignorance or by their ijtihad or by their mistake. He said, فَقَدْ أَخْبَرَ اللَّهُ سُبْحَانَهُ بِجَهْلَ كَثِيرٍ مِنَ الْكُفَّارِ مَا تَسْرِيهِهِ بِكُفْرِهِمْ وَوَصَفَ النَّصَارَ بِجَهْلِ مَا أَنَّهُمْ لَا شَقَّ الْمُسْلِمْ لَا يُشَقَّ الْمُسْلِمْ فِي كُفْرِهِمْ وَكَفَرَ مَنْ شَقَّ فِي كُفْرِهِمْ So the Shaykh went on to say that uh, the exception, meaning that those people, some of the people have made mistakes and, and made mistakes in their ijtihad and their jahil. Not everyone is excused or will be forgiven by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has described many people like the Christians with ignorance in the Quran, saying that they are ignorant, has described them as being ignorant and that they're uh, ignorance was not excused and that they were still considered uh, disbelievers and that no, a Muslim should never have doubt about that about their disbelief uh, and whoever وَكَفْرَ مَنْ شَقَّ فِي كُفْرِهِمْ and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also uh, makes takfir or declares the person who doubts that those people, meaning the, the, the Christians, are disbelievers, Allah 
declares them to be disbelievers. Meaning that if someone, no matter what, even if they say the Shahada, they say the Shahadatain, they bear witness that there's one God worthy of worship, and that Muhammad is the last prophet and messenger, alayhi salatu wasalam, but yet they have doubt that the Jews or doubt that the Christians are disbelievers, then they have disbelief. Allah has declared them to be disbelievers. And the Quran uh, has uh, uh, ample evidence that the one who has doubt in the foundation of the religion has disbelief. So and then the Shaykh went on to explain what is shak, what is doubtfulness. Doubtfulness, it is having um, it is having doubt between two two different uh, issues or two different uh, two different views, similar to the one. And he gives an example. The first example, he said, "Kalla di la yizm yizm bi sidq rasul wa la kadhibu," like the one who is not certain about the truthfulness of a messenger, meaning the messen one of the prophets, alayhim salatu wasalam, or about their, them being liars. So the person who has doubt, they say, you know, I'm not sure if the prophet, alayhi salam, if what he was saying was true here, or uh, if it, uh, or that he, maybe he lied here, or maybe he, what have you, a'udhu billah min dhalika. The person who holds this belief has disbelief. This is what shuck is. This is what doubt is. Meaning they're not going to, uh, they're not certain about what, whether the messenger is, was, was truthful, alayhi salatu wasalam, or not. And then he gives another example. He said, and also, for example, another example is the person who is not certain about whether the day of judgment is going to happen or not. Or, or other examples uh, similar to this, then this is disbelief. Similar to the person who also doesn't believe in the obligation of the prayer or the lack of obligation of prayer. Or, O la ya'taqid tahrim zina. Or the person who doesn't disbelieve that uh, uh, adultery or fornication is prohibited in Islam or not prohibited. They, they don't believe it uh, that has been uh, prohibited or, or not. They have doubt about this. So this is the person who has doubtfulness. This, the consensus of scholars, the people who fall into those above categories we just mentioned, those examples, the consensus of the scholars have declared them to be disbelievers. And he said there is no excuse for the person whose uh, state is like that. Meaning the person who has doubt about those issues. Is there a hellfire? Is there a paradise? I really don't know. I've read it in the Quran. I really don't believe it. Is there a day of judgment or not? Read it in the Quran. Really don't believe it. Really not sure. I'm not sure. You know, I, I'm just going to put my eggs in this basket and think hopefully it's probably true. So I'll be with the Muslims. But I'm not really sure. So the person who has doubt in these issues has disbelieved. They are not a believer in Allah. Because those are things which the ulama they call. They are considered ma'lum min adin bidurura that those are issues which are known to the religion by necessity that every that everyone knows even non-muslims they know even if they haven't read the quran they know that muslims are not supposed to commit adultery and fornication they know that muslims don't eat pork they know that Muslims, uh, you know, those are some things which are well known that even the non-Muslims know about Muslims, about these things, that they're not supposed to do this thing. So for someone to consider themselves a Muslim, but yet they have doubt about this, they, it's, we're not talking about the one who does the sin. So for example, a person who, com, uh, a Muslim who commits adultery, who, who uh, drinks wine, 
okay? Drinks wine or they commit adultery. Then after that, they say, you know, I've been doing this so much that I think, I'm not really sure if it's really haram or not. You know, I, I, I really don't think, I know I've read it in the Quran or, or what have you. I'm not really sure about this because I'm, I'm kind of getting used to this and it just doesn't seem that bad. You know, I haven't hurt anybody. I, I just got drunk. I didn't uh, beat on, beat up anybody. I didn't steal from anybody. I'm not hurting any, taking, violating anybody else's right. I just got drunk. So maybe it's not haram. This person is disbelief because they are doubting the things that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala has prohibited. Or likewise, the person who's been doing zina so much that they believe to believe, they begin to think that it's uh, either lawful or they really just don't know. How is it possible you don't know when the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet وسلم, have ex a very uh, explicitly uh, showed th that those things are prohibited? Uh, and so those are just some of the benefits from the Shaykh and there are so m much uh, statements, so many statements about this from the scholars of Islam and we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil and just to go back to make sure that we understand this issue the Shaykh said whoever does not consider polytheists to be disbelievers or doubts their disbelief or authenticates their religion or their madhab or their methodology has disbelieved and this is again not from the Shaykh rahimahullah ta'ala but however these are kawaid these are principles that are directly that are that are directly derived from the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the madhab of Ahl Sunnati Wal Jama'ah from the scholars in Islam Rahimahumullah Ta'ala and these are things that the scholars have consensus about that the person who does not declare those people that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala and His Messenger Alayhi Salatu Wasalam have declared to be disbelievers as disbelievers then they have disbelieved. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil and protect us from these false type of da'wahs that these uh, new deviants and heretics have come up with. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.